Wow, we sure do sell a lot of Gavita lighting products. I wonder what Gavita is going to come out with next. Thanks for logging on to MonsterGardens.com. We're showing you the new Gavita E Series. This is actually the Gavita 6750, which is actually dims from anywhere from 400 to 825. This is extremely versatile because it can also plug into a 120 line. Now we're going to show you here how it's going to work just fine. All you Gavita customers out there have been used to doing it at 240 only. Well, we're here to show you that it can go on a 110, 120. So here we go with the regular power cord right into a standard house outlet. And it's going to fire right up. The other beauty about this Gavita E-Series is because it's running at 110, the valves is extremely cool. Alright, so this is after 20 minutes of operating the Gavita E-Series ballast. Remember, this is operating at 120 volts. It's a standard house outlet. Now watch, as I put my face up to it, there really is no heat. I mean, I, I would feel comfortable putting even sensitive portions like the side of my body to this if I could. See, the major benefit about ballast running cooler is you're basically using the energy to create light. You're not using the energy to create heat in your grow room. It's also gonna last a lot longer because keeping your, all the ele electronics that are operating in here operating more smoothly, less likely to fail down the line. And it's not having your electrical supply from your main power supply working extra hard to keep these cool to deliver that light. So the major benefit of having a a complete fixture such as this one here is you're eliminating the lamp cord. When you eliminate the lamp cord, you're eliminating the radio frequency interference. And that that right there is the main thing. It's a common conversation we have with customers here every day is about how can how can I limit my RF interference? The problem with RF interference is not only are you going to be able to not only are you going to cancel out your radio, your television, um, and other electronics without your room, but you're also going to affect neighbors and other surrounding people that are around your area. And that can not only can it bring attention to your area, but you're also going to be disturbing other people's life. Um, I mean, you could have your neighbor right down the way, you could have a thousand lights in a given area, and your neighbor can still flip through his radio, flip through his television, talk on the phone, his pH meter is going to be accurate, only because the RF interference has been eliminated by eliminating the lamp cord. This is a Gavita lamp. Philips doesn't make 750 watt lamps. It's something we specially made for this uh, for this industry. Same performance, same output, same spectral output. So also make sure all times you push this really close. If you don't close these properly, don't you're arc. gonna have arcing and you're arc. gonna be in problems. So make sure they're nice and close. There's That's with that one that failed, he probably didn't push it close all the yeah. way. Yeah, make sure that they close. If they don't close, you will get problems, you start arcing, this will start going black. It's not a factory mistake, it's a customer mistake. Right. This is for people with lower ceilings that have less height. This is a great solution to still being able to utilize the double-ended technology. This is the Gavita Master EL2 controller. Uh, this controller can do up to 80 ballast. Um, so we go to the first, first, first set, it's output mode. It's a really simple controller. Automatic, it will run through the controller. Lights on, lights off. Really, really simple. We go to the second one, it's output level. It's like your dimming button at the moment. Actually, you can set it at any level you want. So if you want your ballast to run at 870 watt, 
you can run it at 870 watts. Um, actually, with the Gavita, you can see actually we can go up to 1150, as you know. So that's your dimming button. Then you have light cycle. It's your timer. It's your on, your off. So that's the timer. Then we have aux function. Aux function. You can have two banks of 40 ballast running as one room, follow main, or actually inverse, and it's the flip flop. So you can flip a room 12, 12. So uh, um, you can actually do two rooms with this. So it's a flip box as well. It's a flip box as well. Then we have an auto dim temperature. So at auto dim temperature, normally it will be at 82. I will put it at 75 for uh, uh, show only. Um, and actually, you will see the temperature dropping. I will show you that when I go back to the beginning. And I'm getting the sensor out. And I will go up to 75. And one moment you see it where 68, 70. We're almost there. I got warm hands, that makes it easy. 74. And now actually you see the two banks dropping down and it's automatically dimming. This is dimming per on percentage. That means that if the system has to run at uh, 830 watt or 720 watts to actually stay within your, your temperature setting, it will do that. Um, so we go to the next one. Shut down temperature. Shut down temperature you put at 95. So it's your hot temperature shut off. This is your hot temperature shut off. Your what air will conditioner happen? fails. Your, air your fan fails. fails. Uh, you got a fire. Anything really bad. It will shut down at 95. You actually have to manually reboot this. But you have a cage clamp on this side. And actually you can put that to your home alarm uh, uh, system as a sensor. And actually when this high temp shutdown happens, you get a little notch on your telephone and you might want to take a lunch break. And you can set it higher than 95. You course. can set it, well, I, I, here, I would let me do this. So I can set it at 96.1, enter, and now it's at 96.1. I mean, this is intuitive controls. It's made to, to work like the human mind. Shutdown temperature. Then we have another nice one. This is sunrise sunset. So normally when you have uh, uh, When you shut down your lights you get the big humidity peak because your plants are still Transpiring and that's where the big humidity peak is where rot comes from and where mildew comes from So for the last two weeks of your grow you're going to use this you can set a ramp time between 11 and 30 minutes and actually ramp the lamp down from a thousand watt to 500 watt really slowly gradually pre-cooling your room until it shuts off and then you only have one third of the humidity peak great solution um, system time calibration uh, we have a temperature sensor as you guys know all the temperature sensors in your room are slightly different um, everybody of different uh, uh, manufacturers are slightly different on their temperature that's a hell to figure out and to tweak out so you can take our temperature probe and calibrate it to your AC temperature probe so they're exactly the same so you never have that problem occur. Language, we do five languages, English, Dutch, French, German and Spanish. I think you guys will prefer the English one and we have a factory reset. The little box has a little cell, energy cell, that will remember all your settings for five years without power. And also whenever something would happen to the box all the lights would go off. So um, this is for pretty much if this box does its job one time and saves your crop you're already a winner. We have the possibilities to do uh, as a sensor to your home alarm system or you can put two ECMs on there. Those are electronic relays and you can actually um, um, do like different auxiliary equipment, switch it on and switch it off like CO2, uh, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, heaters. Uh, there are two 15 amps uh, uh, relays. So where does this unit talk to the ballast, talk to the Gavita. Well, pretty much it, it, pretty much it goes to, uh, well, let me take this that. Our, uh, our remote Gavita, uh, we have the full fixture, of course, and pretty much it's a phone wire that uh, goes into the, that goes into the ballast, and you pretty much daisy chain it to the next one. Oh, so you daisy chain each phone wire uh, yeah. into the next ballast. So you start with one ballast and you go to the next ballast. And to the next ballast, it's pretty easy. Same on the, same on the full fixture. You just put it in there and you just keep on daisy chaining it through a little box. It's so easy, it's all plug and play. 
Also, the new ballast, uh, the new ballast that we have, we don't have inrush anymore, so you don't need relays anymore. It's over.